Now joined by TSN hockey insider Chris Johnston. Chris, William Nylander speaks to the media for the first time since this health issue popped up. What stood out? Maybe just how uncomfortable it felt. I think that it was clear that William Nylander himself didn't want to get into any of the specifics, didn't really want to give us much uh, in terms of what he's been thinking or feeling during this time. You know, did mention he's been quite nervous watching the games uh, from afar. But, you know, I think that he's a pretty happy-go-lucky guy generally, and, and you do sense that it's it's been hard on him. And, and you know, I, I, I don't want to put any words in his mouth, but it just it felt a little bit more stilted. And so it can't be comfortable, first of all, just dealing with something that's required him to miss already three games in this series after playing the whole season, now being such the center of attention. And, you know, full credit to him for coming out and speaking. But I didn't learn a whole lot. I just sense from the body language he's a little ornery about the topic. All right, Austin Matthews missed the morning skate, game three. They had a day off yesterday, not part of practice today. What do you make of where things stand with number 34? Well, the good news is, is he's played over 46 minutes in the last two games, and he's, he's given a lot of himself in those games, right? Even throwing his body around a lot, something Sheldon Keefe noted in Game 3, where, you know, playing through an illness that, that day, you know, he didn't maybe have his scoring touch or his legs in the same explosive manner you're used to seeing, but he's still finding a way to make an impact on the game. And so I don't get the sense there's any real concern here about him potentially missing a Game 4. Uh, but obviously, he's already at the stage of the playoffs. You usually see this much longer on in a playoff run, where, where players just play games more or less and, and aren't practicing much or, or, or you know using energy in any other fashion. Austin started the playoffs that way and, and you know I do think it's it's positive how much of an impact he's made but um, you know pretty notable not to see him skating at all outside the games in the last uh, four or five days. It looks like the Leafs are going to make their first change on defense in this series. What do you think about the potential of TJ Brody entering the series? Well, he's someone they're comfortable with, right? He's played a lot of games in Toronto in the playoffs, uh, even before that when he was a, a member of the Calgary Flames. He was a, a regular member of this defense corps really until the trade deadline when Ilya Labushkin and Joel Edmondson were acquired in separate deals uh, by the Leafs. And, you know, I think he brings a couple things. Obviously, again, he's, he's comfortable on the ice. A little better puck mover, uh, you know, especially as the Leafs look to exit their zone than, than some of his counterparts that have been playing. And he kills a lot of penalties. And, and you know, what's one storyline we've been hitting on pretty hard here is especially teams with Boston having five power play goals in the three games in the series. So, you know, I, I think it, it's a logical change to make. Um, you know, it'll be interesting to see what he has because this is sort of an unaccustomed feeling really this last month, six weeks, where he's, he's really been a healthy scratch for the first time in a long time. And, um, you know, but it's fresh legs for the Leafs and, and, you know, they'll be obviously looking to improve on the PK with this two days between games because that's been one of the, their Achilles heels in this series thus far. Ilya Labushkin missed practice today. He went back to California to meet his newborn daughter. Congratulations to the Labushkin family. He is expected back and to be available for game four.